What's up guys? Welcome to Mass Effect Talks. Today's episode is going to be, uh, it's not special, but it has been requested a lot by people. It is regarding the four issues of Invasion. The series is now complete. Uh, it, the last issue just came out this past Wednesday, the 18th. It is a pretty good comic. I enjoyed it. But one of the major reasons why I think it's a good idea to read it, or at least know about it, is because it's, it directly ties to Mass Effect 3. The comic stars Arya Talok. She is my favorite Asari by far. I absolutely love Arya. And in this comic, it's super cool because it goes into how awesome she is. Like, how strong her biotics are. And she really is very strong. Um, I can't wait to see her in action in Mass Effect 3 because I'm pretty sure we are going to see her uh, use her biotics and just go crazy um, in Mass Effect 3, uh, especially because of how the comic ends. This was the first issue. They all have little taglines, and for the first issue, the tagline was, She'll go to any length to protect what's hers. I'm going to talk about the issues in order. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail, but I am going to try to mention all of the important parts in each issue. So the first issue uh, was released on October 19th, 2011. I already talked about this issue in depth. I had a spoiler-free video, and I also had a video with spoilers where I talked about the issue in detail. So if you want to see that, um, check it out. Uh, it's I, I should have it in my Mass Effect playlist. But, um, I think it's called, like, about the first issue of Invasion or something like that. So right now I'm just going to mention the most important things that were in this issue. One of the most important things going into reading this, this comic is understanding the relationship between Arya and the Elusive Man. This relationship was established in the last novel, Retribution. Um, Arya and the Elusive Man start to work together. The Elusive Man wants Paul Grayson, an ex-Cerberus member. He betrayed the Elusive Man. When the Elusive Man got a hold of him, he implanted Paul Grayson with Reaper technology. And now uh, Paul Grayson has all this Reaper tech in him. He's basically turning into this crazy Reaper husk. But he still has some control over his mind, so he's not those mindless husks. They're a little bit different. Then Paul Grayson escapes, so the elusive man is trying to get a hold of Paul Grayson again, and he he strikes a deal with Arya. He pretty much wants Arya to 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 get a hold of Paul Grayson, and they start they start working together. Uh, it's a it's a huge benefit for Arya because the elusive man promises her a lot of money, um, so much that Arya was like, really. So Arya will work with you if you have a really good reason to convince her, and if um, it benefits her in a in a big in a big way. The way that a retribution ends, though, um, is Arya and the elusive man are kind of on edgy waters, just because Arya thinks that the elusive man betrayed her her trust, and she's pissed. And the elusive man is like, uh, no, I didn't, uh, it's, it's nothing personal, blah, blah, blah. He's trying to, to, to fix things up with her. And this is, this, uh, comic starts off where the, their relationship is kind of, uh, you know, on a, on the brink, but they're still okay with each other because they're still working with each other. Arya has allowed Cerberus to use Omega as a, as a, like, s supply hub. So uh, Cerberus ships are, are uh, landing on Omega constantly now, and that's the deal between uh, Arya and the Elusive Man, that he could go ahead and do that. So that's where the comic starts. It jumps right in. There's a Cerberus ship that's landing on Omega, and a group of like mercenaries are waiting for it, and they're like, let's hijack it, because they know that they have supplies on board. But instead of finding supplies, they find these crazy creatures that come out of the ship, the Cerberus ship. And they're, they're called adjutants. And what they are, they're, they're reaper, they're these reaper creatures. And they start attacking everybody, and the thing that the adjutant could do is if they touch you or if they grab you, they have a way to infect you with reaper technology. They, they like, 
pulsate you with this Reaper tech and you become an adjutant soon after. So these adjutants start killing everybody and turning uh, others into these adjutants and Arya finds out and she uh, she sends her team and they start killing all the adjutants and Arya arrives and she goes all crazy in their face and everything and starts destroying these adjutants like nothing. I mean this adjutant is about to like grab her and she just like biotic slap like destroys this thing. Um, so it was really really cool to see her in action. That's what's going on there, the Arya against the adjutant. These are going to be in Mass Effect 3. Not sure if you could see it very well, but that's an adjutant right there. So after this attack, um, Arya is like, what the hell just happened? The elusive man just screwed me over. He sent these damn creatures in the Cerberus ship to take us out, and she was just pissed. And, and then all of a sudden another Cerberus, other Cerberus ships start coming in and she's like, oh hell no. And she's like, activate the defenses and she's like gonna blow these things up. But then one of the ships uh, identifies himself. The name of the ship was Elbrus and the, the, co the commanding officer of the ship was General Oleg Petrovsky. He's like, don't shoot us down, uh, we know what's going on, we're here to... To, to destroy more adjutants because they're on their way. He starts telling Arya that, that he had, that, that Cerberus had um, the adjutants on their base, that they were testing on them and like uh, finding out more about them, but that the adjutants mysteriously uh, got loose and they just got, they just went into Cerberus ships and they started to go towards Omega. Um, and Arya's like, you guys had these Reaper things on your station and they just left like you guys just accidentally let them go it just didn't make sense to Arya she was like are you serious and um so she doesn't really trust them in the beginning but uh, Petrovsky uh, he's like we have to stop this there's more on the way and they do they more do arrive they start fighting them and Petrovsky tells Arya that the, the only way to um, stop others from turning into these adjutants was is to not only kill the person but also decapitate the corpse because even after they're dead they could still uh, come back to life as an adjutant so you have to cut off the head so now so Petrovsky um, tells Arya we have to stop this and she's like fine you know she joins him on, on the Elbrus, the ship that he came in, so that they could go stop the adjutants from coming into Omega, uh, like from the Omega-4 relay, because uh, that's where they were coming through. So Arya leaves Omega. The people that work for Arya, like her, her top commands, one of them is Anto, and Anto is one of one of her, like her second in command almost. They have to, they have to defend o Omega while she's gone. But another Cerberus guard shows up named Colonel Ash. He shows up on, on Omega and he has a different plan. The elusive man is telling Ash, you have to take over Omega now. And, and then you find out uh, that the adjutant attack was actually planned. Like it was that they, they wanted that to happen so that Arya would leave Omega. They had to get uh, Arya off Omega somehow. So they had the whole adjutant attack. They got her off Omega. Ash came in and now he's going to take control of Omega. Um, and this was all the plan of the elusive man. So when Ash is on, on Omega, he starts to... Uh, I mean, there's this resistance, right, of all the gangs. Eclipse, Blood Pack and the Blue Suns are all fighting they're, they're as, as one. The three gangs actually fight together um, to protect Omega while Arya is gone. And Ash and his Cerberus soldiers are just tr uh, destroying all these gangs and trying to take over Omega, but the gangs aren't giving it up easily. So that's pretty much how the first issue ends. That Arya is not on Omega, and she has no idea what's going on. Um, on Omega that they're trying to take it over. So now Arya is pissed. This uh, tagline is nobody bleeps with Arya. Like, it doesn't even say the bad word, but it just says that. Now in this issue, uh, it, it continues. They all directly continue uh, one after the other. They're trying to take out the adjutants um, on the Elbrus. This Petrovsky and Arya. 
And Ari is suggesting, she was like, well, let's just turn off the Omega-4 relay. And that way it'll prevent the adjutants from coming through. And, Petrov and, and Petrovsky is just like, no, you can't. You can't, deactivate a, um, you can't deactivate a mass relay. And if you're thinking of putting mines around the mass relay, it'll just take way too long. And he's like, and plus, the elusive man would never allow it. So, because they still, because they're still, um, Cerberus is still getting a lot of information from the other side of the Omega-4 relay, uh, you know, where the collector base was and everything, um, Cerberus is on the other side. They have bases over there, and they're investigating a lot of information regarding the collectors and the Reapers. So what they do is they're, they're just getting overwhelmed with the adjutants. Like, adjutants are coming from left and right. First, they were, the adjutants just got a hold of, like, Cerberus transport ships. But then later, they start finding out that they're actually starting to learn how to fly, like, actual uh, fighter fighter ships, um, the adjutants. So now they're starting to, like, have more firepower, and they're starting to become a little more dangerous. And Petrovsky's just like, we gotta get out of here because we're gonna go down, and that's not gonna help anybody. He's like, let's use the Omega-4 relay and just get shot into the center of the, the galaxy, and then we'll, we'll plan there. So they do that, and so Arya leaves the area where Omega is, and Anto on Omega finds out that Arya's gone. And he's just like, Arya would never abandon Omega. And he was like, she's either dead or she's an adjutant herself now. So he's like, now I'm the king of the world. So now he wants to take over Omega. He's like, all right, well, I guess, I guess that makes me um, the leader or whatever. So he, he starts to fight for the position. I mean, Omega is just getting torn up by the, by, by the gangs and by Cerberus. So everybody's fighting for their spot to, to, to lead Omega. Ash wants Omega and so does Anto. And Arya doesn't even know that this is going on. She's just like, all right, well, let's just fix everything and then go back. So Petrovsky and Arya arrive at the, the Cerberus base where the adjutants had escaped from. So when they arrive to, on the Cerberus base, they see that there's still adjutants there and they're attacking all of the Cerberus um, personnel that was there, the scientists and everything. And they start, the, the Elbrus, when it arrives, they start to destroy all the adjutants that they see. So they kill them all and they leave the ship and they board the station to see what's going on. More adjutants come out of nowhere. Arya just unleashes like a biotic craziness. It was so cool. I mean, there, there she is right there. I don't know if you can see it there. But she's going nuts, and she uses so much of her power um, to destroy these things that she just passes out because she wipes out all of these adjutants herself. And Petrovsky picks her up and takes her away. And Arya is actually being held like hostage almost. She wakes up with these things called biotic dampeners. She can't use her biotic powers in these things. See those little things that she has on? Those are dampeners, biotic dampeners. So she's like, what the hell are you doing? And Petrovsky's like, well, there's been a change of plans. And he, he, he shows her the message um, of Ash and C Colonel Ash on Omega and the elusive man. And the elusive man is telling Ash, you have to take over Omega. And Ash is like, oh, we're, we're, we're taking over Omega and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and or Arya's... She's she looks like that like she's like oh hell no so that's why they have her like that because they're like we have to prevent Arya from going back to Omega because Cerberus needs to get a hold take hold of Omega so it ends like that with uh, Arya finding out Cerberus's um, plans uh, of, of for taking over Omega.